everybody, it's Karen Miller from Karen's Quilts, Crows, and Cardinals blog and Redbird Quilt Co. Here today to share a little bit about how I stitched out this curved feather design on the Chickadees and Berries panel for the Bear Creek Quilting Company. This cute little panel from Benartex um, made by Jackie Robinson creates a wall hanging, a table runner, and four coasters out of one panel and a little bit of yardage. So on the wall hanging I stitched out several of these curved um, feathers and I would like to share with you today how I went about doing that. So I have a quilt panel here that's already sandwiched and ready to go. I've done a couple of practice uh, feathers on it already. But I wanted to show you um, on this how I mark the feather spine on almost all the feathers I do. I mark the feather spine with a disappearing ink um, pen. It's air or water soluble. With air it'll go away over time or you could use water and take it out almost immediately. The other option is to use a hair marker which is actually a tool that you would score the fabric with. You would um, basically put a crease in the fabric marking your spine or you could use a sew line um, lead pencil by United Notions. I also wanted to point out that this is my fourth take on this uh, particular um, feather tutorial. So I decided a little chocolate was in order because I didn't really have time to pour a glass of wine and drink it. I wanted to kind of get this recorded for you. So I all have uh, in my machine my Janome Horizon. I'm all decked out for free motion quilting. I have a Supreme slider, some gloves. Um, I have RFL 50 weight thread in the top and the bobbin and I'm working with quite a large needle right now because I do have two layers of batting in um, my quilt sandwich. So I'm going to start at the base of the feather and I'm um, kind of a creature of habit. If you, um, So I always like to create um, start up the right hand side of my feather and I'm going to start out on that feather by just stitching a little pearl at the bottom, it's kind of my beginner. Stitching. And then what I do is I do bump back feathers on most of my feather pieces. So I create a feather, backtrack halfway around the feather, and then spin another feather off of that. So you can see where there's a backtrack stitching going on there, and then you create a new feather. So I'm just going to keep working up the inside of this feather, um, creating a feather with a nice rounded edge, backtracking and then coming back and creating a new feather. Always bring your feather spines back, your feather stitching back to the spine that you have marked. They just look like they're finished that way. So I'm gonna keep moving my way up the spine, creating a nice rounded feather, backtracking, and then another feather off of that. Coming back at an angle to the spine. I'm gonna keep doing this right up the spine and right around the center portion of the curve. Whoops, that one wasn't very rounded. I'm going to try and make another round one to account for that. And it doesn't matter if you stay exactly on your mark. As long as you're making pretty looking feathers, no one's going to worry about whether you the, um, hit your purple mark or not. That's going to go away over time. So as you can see, I climbed all the way up the spine and um, um, created a final feather at the top. Now what I want to do is kind of um, backtrack my way back down the feather all the way down that marked spine. I'm just going to come all the way back down it to the beginning. I'm going to stop and rearrange my hands and I usually stop with the needle in the down position. And now I'm going to uh, rearrange my quilt top and start at the bottom on the left side with another with another pearl. Off of that pearl I'll spin into the next feather, backtrack, and create a third. Always coming into the spine at a nice angle. Don't come straight into the spine. That looks a little wonky. Unless you're creating primitive feathers, which sometimes you can get away with um, that particular angle. So I'm just going to keep working my way up the spine, creating a feather, backtracking, or bumping back, and then creating another feather off of that. There's multiple different ways to create feathers, but I find that this approach works really well for me. 
It's always good before you stitch out any feathers if you actually draw them with a pencil and a paper. Draw your feather design on paper and practice it over and over again before you start stitching. So I'm going to just keep going here. You can kind of stretch these feathers out as big as you like depending on the area that you have to fill. I like it kind of with, when they take a free form approach um, and they kind of look like they aren't all planned out. When you fit around this outside corner, you're going to have to change your angle a little bit so you're still coming into that corner at a nice, um, at a nice angle. And I don't have any pins in my um, fabric sandwich, so things are shifting on me a little bit, but we're just going to kind of keep going and wing it here. Nice rounded feather, back track, and create another. Come in at a nice angle and follow that spine down. You can kind of hear your machine when you're starting to stitch over old thread. They kind of will complain at you a little bit, but just keep going. Don't settle in that spot for too long and it should be fine. Now when you get back around the top, sometimes I like to stop and do an assessment here about what, how I want to finish things out. It looks like I'm just going to lay another pearl right in there to finish out this feather top. I will um, usually take a couple stitches to lock things. Then I would usually trim my stitches flush, but I'm going to use my machine um, so that you can see where I'm at right now. And so you can see on this practice piece, I've done a lot of other stitching tonight just to kind of lay this in for you. Um, and this is basically the same curled feather I did on the Chickadees and Berries quilt for um, the Bear Creek Quilting Company. And you can find the free tutorial on their blog and you can also find more free motion quilting tips for that top um, on my blog, Karen's Quilts, Crows, and Cardinals. Thanks very much for stopping by today. Have a great day.